Hey, what's up everybody? Joe Simpson here, and I wanna to talk today about an overlooked and a forgotten topwater lure that I think people need to tune back into and start using again. I've had some great luck and, and great success in the past couple of trips out on the water, um, and so has my friend who fishes with me, Pat. Um, we've been doing real good with some poppers. So I wanted to talk about the most basic popper that money can buy. It's called the Rebel um, Pop R. And this is a wonderful lure, man. This thing is sold in a package. These three poppers come for $9.99 on Amazon. They're about as inexpensive as you can get for a topwater lure. Now you could go out and buy a Whopper plopper or something like that for 12, 15 bucks and those work great. But I just think that lately and in the past few years, people have been dragging those lures across every bank and shore and brush pile in the water. And I think it's just uh, overused and, and sometimes it's good to stick to the basics. You can get this on Amazon and it comes basically in three colors. My favorite one is the one in the middle and that's called the Foxy Shad, I believe. And then the um, two on the end, one has more chartreuse, one has more shine, but they're basically the same body, same pattern um, and the same thing. The one thing I will say about these lures that I would probably do straight away after buying them is change the hooks. Now you don't have to go crazy with the hooks. Um, just make sure you match the size. Um, so the two popper sizes that I like to use, the Pop R60, that's the two and a half inch with a little bit fatter body. I would say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of the size of your thumb. And then there's the Pop R Teeny or the Teeny Pop R. Now this one is really cool because it's only two inches and it's perfect for like a BFS setup or a really ultra light uh, spinning rod configuration. So it's a really great lure for that. But anyway, the Teenies uh, use a number eight uh, hook and the Pop R 60s or the regular Pop R two and a half inch, they use a number six. Number six is actually bigger, the number eight is smaller, kind of goes in reverse, so I don't know why. So one thing that I did, and, and let me cut these out of the box real quick. I wanted to leave them in there so you could see how they're packaged. Again, this box is $9.99, so you're basically $3 and change per lure. Um, Cut these things out of here. Wow, they went flying. Okay, so these are quite a bit noisier too. These are some chatterbugs. So you can hear, this one sounds like a paint can being shaken. And this one's a little more dull. I really do like the teenies because they're, they're, they're more subtle and they attract a broader range of fish. They all have that same uh, back coating, man, these, these hooks aren't bad actually, they're pretty sticky, um, of the blue on all of these lures. And then they're all kind of like lighter and white on the bottoms. All right, this one right here is my favorite color by far. Um, these hooks are pretty sticky, so you're not gonna do too bad with these, but one thing I do like to do is I like to change these hooks. My friend made me some trailer hooks. You see how these, these all have like feathers dangling? My friend made me a box of uh, different colored feather hooks, and I, I've shown these before in other videos. And you can see I've got a whole array of colors and choices. You could come up with all different ways um, to work these lures to, to make it effective, and you just have to figure out what's working. And then once you get a pattern or once you see something work, uh, just keep repeating it. And you know, throughout the day, if it changes, it changes. So, uh, but literally three dollars. This is one of the best topwater lures you can get. Um, so I'm going to take these out and uh, re-rig them and put some new stuff on them and get them out on the water and, and play around and see if I can uh, make something happen. Okay guys, part two of my popper video here. I wanted to take you out on the water and show you how effective this is. Now I have a uh, quarter ounce popper on this BFS rod, which is a little heavy for this rod, but since I broke the tip, it's become just a little bit stiffer. So it's no longer super, super lightweight and it doesn't throw the lures quite as well as I'd like to. So what I'm gonna do is get down here on this dam, catch a couple fish and show you how to work this popper a couple different ways, and then get the heck out of here before I get killed by the thunder and lightning. There's tons of poison ivy down here. So I've got a great vantage point right here. I can do some good casting. And get out of this weeds. So as you can see out there, I'm just letting it sit. And every now and then I'll give it a little pop. And I might be a little bit too far out from those weeds. I might want to be a little closer, but first cast, I want to just make sure I had the feel of how this thing was throwing. And 
There's a bass right under me. Now you can give these things like a lot of hard pops or you can give them just a couple twitches here and there. And I'm not in the best position to be popping this lure. I'm not really walking it, so to speak. There we go. There we go. That was that same bass I thought I saw underneath me. So I changed these hooks out to be owner ST36 hooks. And you can see that's the that's the hook that got them. Usually on these topwater baits, it's these center front hooks that get the fish. So it's a little bit of a decent fish there. Put them back in and let's get one over near that grass. That's a little better. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you guys saw that hit because it was kind of directly below me. Ooh, fish. He took it down and I didn't know he was on. I'm not controlling him very good. He's pulling pretty good. Again, the owner hooks came through and the back hook sealed the deal. Fish number two. Guys, so, hey, I appreciate you guys watching today and coming along and watching me throw this lure, but you know, I really do think the poppers have been the forgotten topwater lure lately. And you know, I'm glad I've been pulling them out and using them because they've been proving to me that some of the old classics are still the way to go. Um, there's a ton of companies that make different poppers and you know there's all kinds of new technologies and different popping mouths popping frogs popping um, walking baits and you name it so really what you're trying to emulate is probably some type of bait fish on top of the water and so it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be expensive although there are uh, definite arguments for having better paint jobs better hooks uh, more expensive lures and i don't dispute any of it um, it's hard to argue with the three dollar popper it really is um, you get a dollar for the hooks uh, three dollar popper um, once you dress it all up and get it done you, you end up with a, a below five dollar lure uh, a handful of these in various colors is going to really set you up now i'm still a little bit undecided on which one i like the best to be honest i used the 60 today in the demonstration uh, the pop r p60 i think it is um, it's a great size. It casts well. Yeah, this is still a reasonable size. It's way smaller than a Whopper Plopper 90 and most of the bass that you want to catch will be able to hit this lure without any issue whatsoever. Um, but I have found, I think, this Pop R Teeny, um, when the fish are finicky, that little tiny bait makes it just an obvious choice for these bass to go for a meal. Um, so, and, and I do like the fact that the Pop R Teeny Sounds like I'm saying Martini. The Pop R Teeny, or the Teeny Pop R, has just a little bit less noise. So if you're going for that subtle, just trying to pull that fish out of the cover or try to get that fish to commit, sometimes the Teeny is the way to go. Only problem is you run into casting issues with the Teeny. So you're gonna be throwing the Teeny on like a BFS type of rod. Um, some type of really sensitive bait caster or you're going to be using spinning gear to throw the teeny which I find to be great you know I use the uh, the spinning gear and I can throw the teeny quite a ways and and still work it just fine and it works perfect so um, you know you can just try them both go back and forth but you know when you're in that tough spot and you're wanting to do some top water fishing and you're not sure what you want to pull out maybe you don't have easy straight runs for the whopper plopper to pull through different lanes and try it out you might have some patches of open area where you can set a popper out there and just pop it a little bit and leave it in the zone. Um, that's what makes them good. You can work those baits in so many different ways and they've, they've proven themselves for the last 50 years. They work, they're solid, and they're cheap. So get yourself some poppers and go out there and try them out. Um, there's nothing more exciting than seeing your popper just get destroyed by a bass. So 
hang in there, keep fishing, and thanks for watching the channel. And please subscribe. Still trying to get to a thousand. I'm almost to 650. Uh, been a little slower lately. Been sick under the weather. Not as many videos. And I've got some cool tech stuff coming up soon. And something that's down the vein of cooking. It's not quite cooking. It's about a device you use for cooking, which I think you guys will like too. So anyway, I'll be talking to you soon. Tight lines, and I'll see you later.